Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad Wa ala alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam Ma bar ayu al-habati fillah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Commanded us And out of his infinite grace, mercy and favor Guided us to the worship of him and him alone And this is the beauty of Islam That Islam calls you away from darkness And oppression To guidance and light And this is one of the reasons why we constantly reject people who are extremist uh, Into terrorist groups and jama'at and the people of Bid'ah and Zandaka because those from amongst them who leave the fold of Islam then we don't even need to speak about them but those that are within the fold of Islam but they distort the image of Islam the beautiful pristine creed and image of Islam then we find that problematic and this is why we speak about them and so never be turned away by the fact that sometimes it becomes necessary to refute misguidance. Because this is from commanding the good and forbidding the evil. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that uh, you are the best nation. That you command to the good and you forbid the evil. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, in the hadith of Abi Sayyid al Khudri, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said, Men ra'a min kum munkaran fil yugayru biyad. Whoever sees a evil, then change it with his hand. Fa in lam yastati' fi bi lisanihi. Fa in lam yastati' fi bi qalbihi wa dhalika adu fil iman. That the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that whenever you see a munkar, an evil, then change it with your hands. If you're unable to do so, which can be the case in many situations, you're unable to do so. Not because your physical strength, but because maybe your mental ability, or maybe your shaksiya, maybe your, your personality, or maybe the fact that it's going to cause greater harm by changing something physically, even though it's evil, to that which is good. So you, that means you don't have the ability. So then you go, then let me stop there. Then by your hand. Change it, the evil, with your hand. And if you are unable to do so, then change it with your heart. And that's the weakest form of faith, but it's a part of Iman as well. Ahabatifillah, I wanted to read something which is very short and concise by Ibn al-Qayyim, Imam Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala and it was explained by Alama Muhammad Aman al-Jami rahimahullah ta'ala, rahimahumullah jami'an and we'll just read this very important ibara and it is per pertinent to what we're talking about that tawheed, the importance of tawheed and Ibn al-Qayyim said rahimahullah ta'ala, he said fa'adham asbab shar sadr he said, one of the greatest reasons for opening the chest, expanding the chest, a tawheed, ala hasab kimalihi, wa quwwatihi, wa ziyadatihi, yukun in shirahu sadra sahibu. So Ibn al-Qayyim said, rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, and one of the greatest ways of expanding the heart or expanding the chest is monotheism, tawheed. And it's, this is dependent on or in relation to the completeness of the tawheed of the person as far as the extent that it expands the chest or the quwa of it, the strength of their tawheed or the ziyadah, or the increase in it. 
And this is a relation to how much it expands that person's chest. What does this mean, Habatifillah? We're going to stop just with that, even before we get to the evidence that Ibn al-Qayyum came with, the ayat, because I don't want to make this long. But just to explain this, so that way it's clear, is what Ibn al-Qayyum, rahimahullah is saying, is that in relation to a person's tawheed and their iman, their belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because there's a relationship, of course, with tawheed and iman, and that sometimes tawheed, uh, tawheed is comprised of iman. And iman or tawheed is a part of iman. Because as from the usul iman that came in the hadith of Jibreel, where Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam about iman, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam responded by saying, and tu'minu billahi wal malaikati wal kutubi wal rasuli wal yawm al akhir wa tu'minu bi qadri khayri wa sharr the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam responded by saying you know after jibril said what is he man what is faith he said in tu'minu billahi wal malaikati wa kutubi wa rasuli wal yawm al akhir he said it's believing in allah so there's the tawheed and tu'minu billahi and this is comprised of all the components of tawheed tawheed the Lordship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's the creator. He's our razaq. He provides for us. He sustains us. He's the creator of the heavens and earth. وَتَوْهِيد الْأُلُوهِيَةِ That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to be worshipped alone. All of our worship, our dua, our supplication. Because a dua is ibadah. كَمَا قَالَ النَّبِي صلى الله عليه وسلم Dua is ibadah. It's worship. We can't worship the graves. We can't supplicate to the graves thinking that it's not ibadah. We can't supplicate to the dead thinking that it's not ibadah. Even though... Uh, the extreme Sufis say this, and other groups, some of the Ratha, the Shia, some of them, they worship their Imams to this extent, and, and others that have just deviated to Bid'a Mukaffara outside of the fold of Islam. But they hold this argument. They say, we're not worshiping them, we're just supplicating for their intercession. But this intercession of Habitatullah is worship, it's ibadah. And supplication is ibadah, because the Prophet ﷺ said, a dua huwa ibadah. He said this in Sunan Tirmidhi. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So this lets us know, Habatifillah, that dua is ibadah. And that's a part of tawheed. And that's a part of iman. And the third component, al-asma'i wa sifat. Tawheed al-asma'i wa sifat. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has divine names and attributes that are unique to him subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the qa'idah with that, which comes from the, 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 the Qur'an, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fi kitab al-kareem, Laysa kamit li shaywa sami'un basir. That there is nothing like him, nothing comparable to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa huwa sami'un basir. He subhanahu wa ta'ala is the all hearing and all seeing. So there Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala negated that there's any resemblance, a tashbih, between him and his creation. But at the same time he affirms subhanahu wa ta'ala that they share the likeness in name. Meaning... Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all hearing. And we have hearing, but our hearing is not like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So they, al-ishtiraq fil asma, the, the way in which they share with the creator of the heavens and earth, anything, is just in name only. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the all-seeing, he's the all-hearing, he's the all-knowing. Our knowledge, we have knowledge. We have hearing and we have sight. The elephant sees and it hears. But none of the creation is comparable or can be made a likeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is perfect in his divine attributes and, and, and his divine attributes. And there is nothing like unto him, nothing comparable to him. So that's a part of Tawheed as well, Allah. And all of that comprises Iman, as we said. And this Iman, or this Tawheed that Ibn al-Qayyim was talking about, Rahmatullah that in relation to your strength in Tawheed, what does he mean by strength? Qawwa to Tawheed. Wa kimala Tawheed. What does he mean by that? He means that a person, everyone's not on the same level with their, 
with their relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but also their understanding of Tawheed and their practice of Tawheed. Tawheed requires practice as well. Tawheed is not just acknowledging those categories of Tawheed. That's not Tawheed. Because that's not full Tawheed. That's a part of Tawheed, is knowing that. That's a part of Ilmi Tawheed. But that's not full Tawheed because you have to practice Islam. You have to have Iman. And Iman, part of Iman, is al qul bilisan, al amal bil qalb wa amal bi That Iman, faith, is made up of our actions. It's made up of the statements of our tongues. And it's made up of the belief in our hearts. That's all, that's all comprised of Iman in Islam. That's the Aqeed of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah as espoused by Allah Azza wa Jal, as revealed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and commanded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam. This is the Aqeed of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah. So, letting us know that Tawheed can be naqs, Tawheed can be lessened. And I used to always reflect, I remember one of the Mashaykh that I studied with in the Haram in Medina, he used to always mention about how someone, a Tawheed, that, say something like, have the Dalil ala Tawheed, he knocks. That this is evidence that so and so, his, his Tawheed, his understanding of Tawheed is lessened, is, 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 um, is deficient. And so I used to reflect, how is that? And so I, I asked the Shaykh and I asked other Mashaykh about this. You know, how can your Tawheed be uh, deficient? Because we understand Tawheed just as those categories without understanding that it's a part of Iman necessarily, and it's a part of practice and implementation. And that's why we say Tawheed al-Ibadah, because that means this has to do with Tawheed, which relates to the actions of the slave, of the servant, us, worshipping Allah. That's Tawheed al-Ibadah, because we raise our hands in dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we're fasting the holy month of Ramadan to Allah azza wa jal. That is Ibadah. That's Tawheed al-Ibadah. That's a relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and that's an action. That's an action. So the way in which someone's Tawheed can be naqs, is that they do less of those actions of ibadah. If you're weak in your salat, you're weak in your iman, and it's a relationship with tawheed. And if you're doing sin, it's a relationship, it shows, it's the leal of the weakness in your tawheed. This is very important to understand this concept, and I'm going to end with this. Because some people will argue and say, hey, you know, I'm a, a believer, I, I'm from Ahl Sunnah, I'm Salafi, I'm this, I'm this, I'm from Ahl Athar, you know, I'm from Ahl Hadith, or I follow Ahl Hadith, believing that their Tawheed doesn't have any deficiency, just because they studied some books on Tawheed. But where their Tawheed could be deficient, if this same person, they're studying this, uh, uh, they, they know the, these uh, concepts, but their Tawheed al Ibad is weak, in that they're committing major sins. So the same individual, maybe they outwardly have a beautiful appearance, beautiful white thobe, beautiful long beard, imama, or whatever. You know, they have some good signs that show signs of iman because those are also outward expressions of iman. Or the sister, she's wearing hijab kamal. She's wearing a beautiful hijab that's, that's covering her, that's, that's showing obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but we don't know what's under. No one knows what's in my heart. No, I don't know what's in your heart. We don't know that. We can only judge by the outward appearance. That's all we know. So those outward manifestations are beautiful. But then maybe inside there's dirt and filth. Because sometimes you have those situations where our brothers have beautiful beards, short thobes, always wearing, you know, the vahir, the, pre the apparent is that they're on the sunnah. But then they go home and they beat their wives. Wife beater, punches her in the nose, breaks her nose, pulls her hair, throws her down the stairs, kills her. This has happened even recently. I read about it. Well, I'm a stand. The sister, beautiful hijab, niqab, sells crack. I know people from communities, they've told me this. But yet, it's from Ahl Sunnah. This is sad. Habitifillah. So it shows us that this is a weakness in their Tawheed. How is this a weakness in their Tawheed? Because if they really knew Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Al-Aleem, 
السميع البصير. If they really knew that, really acknowledged that, really believed that, not just on their tongue, then they would never do that. Because you wouldn't do that stuff in front of your Muslim brother and sister or even in front of your non-Muslim associates or family members. You wouldn't do that. I wouldn't want my mother to see me selling crack. And she's not Muslim. Because she would never forget that. Oh, all this time you've been talking all this. And we've seen you. You never wear your trousers below your ankles. We always tell you to wear them. Below your ankles look like other people. Why can't you cut that beard? But then you're selling crack? That would destroy a lot of the dawah that I've been trying to do with them. And that would illustrate what? Weakness in iman and weakness in tawheed and naqs in tawheed. Habit if I think we made our point. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with ilm and nafiyah. Wa rizqin tayyibah. Wa amin al-mutakabbinah. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.